Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the webinar, Level Up Your Marketing with Programmatic In-Game, hosted by StackAdapt. Before we get started, uh, we just wanted to um, cover a few housekeeping items. So number one, any questions that you may have, you can always put them into the Go to Webinar Panels question area. Just write them down and we'll get to them at the end of the session, basically in a Q&A session that we'll be having. In case we do not have enough time to uh, get through all the questions, we will make sure to answer them in a follow-up right after the webinar. So no worries about that. And with that being said, this webinar will also be recorded. So you'll also get a get the presentation basically afterwards as well. Cool. With that being said, let's get started. Today's webinar will be presented, first of all, by me, Tuna. I'm a sales manager who joined StackAdapt in September, and I'm basically overseeing the German market together with Yasmin. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to today's webinar. Yes, my name is Yasmin Tamir, I'm also one of the sales managers here at Stack It Apt, um, looking after the EMEA market. So yeah, looking forward to uh, going through the content with you today. Coolio. So to kick things off, first of all, let's talk about Stack It Apt. Ideally, hopefully all of you already know Stack It Apt or are working with us. But just to give you a quick run through, basically we're a self-serve programmatic advertising platform, which is being used by the most exceptional digital marketers all over the world, which counts all of you as well. Basically our platform allows you to combine progressive work through machine learning, which meets cutting edge user experience, because that is the most important factors for us personally. In our platform, you can of course plan, execute and manage all your data-driven digital advertising campaigns, across all the devices, inventories, and publisher partners that we offer. Quite simple and yet very effective. So for today's agenda, first of all, I'll be talking you through the gaming industry trends and just showcasing you all, all those trends that are currently happening. Afterwards, Yasmin will take over and she'll be talking through how you can craft your gaming strategy, as well as showing you a few examples and ad creatives. Last but not least, we'll be doing a wrap up and then commence the Q&A session. Number one, one of my favorite topics, by the way, gaming industry trends. When looking at the state of the gaming market, it has become actually quite evident that gaming has become a major part of our life. It has become one for me, so this also goes to heart, to be honest. And gaming has really come close as a huge entertainment channel at the moment. And with that being said, obviously brands and organizations have taken notice as well, and they're just looking to enter this space at lightning speed. What that means is basically you can see on those small articles that we showcased here, Roblox, which is a huge gaming platform, is looking to launch in-game ads. Microsoft is looking to take on Apple and Google for a piece of the mobile gaming pie. And finally, TikTok is getting serious about mobile gaming as well. So basically, every single brand out there is trying to get a piece of the cake. And I think that makes a lot of sense when we look at the general trends. So it is forecasted that by 2025, there will be over 3.5 billion gamers worldwide. The current number is already quite crazy, in my opinion, because we already have around 3.2 billion gamers worldwide. But seeing that this trend is not really stagnating, it's not coming to a halt, but on the contrary, it keeps on increasing, just shows that there's huge upside potential in this market. But of course, I think it's even more relevant and very much interesting to see considering this the EMEA webinar, that players are also growing within our markets. So at the, current, at the current moment, we're sitting at around 890 million users across EMEA that are using video games, that are playing video games, mobile, PC, and on console. This number is going to grow within two years to almost a billion. And it just shows that this market keeps on growing and growing and growing across all the markets. And with that being said, this one was a very interesting chart for me personally, because it showcases the distribution of gamers in selected gaming markets, in this case, Italy, France, Germany, Spain, and the UK. And it showcases, of course, starting at age group 18 and plus, what exactly is the distribution? And for me, it was interesting to see that it's actually quite evenly spread across. Obviously, there's a general focus on a 25 to 34 years old age, but it shows that the demographics are quite widely spread and there's like not real not, not really a focus point so you can generally target any age groups within within these markets everyone wants a piece of the gaming pie and then we also look towards the gaming revenue in EMEA in general by device so foremost console is actually taking over the market with 
followed by mobile with 35%, and finally PC with 20%, uh, 20% resulting in 35.4 billion euros spent, which also makes EMEA the third largest region by consumer spend in the gaming market. It's quite, quite astounding numbers, honestly. With that being said, I'll give the ball over to Yasmin, and she'll be talking you through how you can craft your gaming strategy. Thank you. Yes, so we've talked about some of the trends and um, just explaining a little bit about why gaming is, is such a large um, channel for us. Um, so yeah, now we're going to get into a little bit more about the, the product itself um, and actually how you can go about planning a campaign. So we know that gamers and that audience is very diverse, influential, uh, you know, they have cash to burn, but they also have time. Uh, and particularly, you know, when it comes to being online, they spend on average around eight and a half hours per week online. And particularly within gaming, um, they tend to spend around an hour and 20 minutes per session, often being completely uninterrupted when playing. And what that means is that you're able to connect with a really captive audience who, you know, it's going to be unlikely that they're multitasking, they're going to be paying attention um, to the game and, of course, to your brand. And that does mean that you can really enhance the memorability and the recognition um, of your ads and of the branding um, through being on those 100% viewable um, environments. We also know that this is um, a massively emerging industry. So what that means is that you can actually reach newer audiences for, for your brands in a much less competitive space. When it comes to the actual games that we are live across, um, you know, as Tuna mentioned at the start, there's um, a good selection of um, uh, kind of uh, devices that you can be on. So everything from consoles all the way to um, on phones. But the, there's also a large selection when it comes to the genres um, kind of of the brands that, that we work with. So we tend to find really good success um, within in-game when it comes to, um, you know, verticals such as entertainment, uh, fashion, automotive, of course, has um, a real, really natural tie within game, but also massive success uh, and growth within FMCG, tech, personal care, all the way to finance brands. So definitely a big variety of um, uh, kind of verticals and brands that, that are making use of this opportunity um, within the new channel. Uh, and as I said, there's definitely diversity of the games as well as the devices. So just a few examples that we've listed there. Um, you know, you can really access all kinds of genres um, and therefore diff slightly different demographics and slightly different audiences, depending on the types of games that you want to target. So, for instance, puzzles and strategy games um, and kind of arcades are going to have a slightly different audience um, to something like action, racing, adventure, um, which really means that you're able to, through the variety of genres, um, target different types of gamers um, with the perfect messaging for them. And the best part of actually being able to do um, uh, in-game within, within Stack Adapt um, particularly me as somebody who's been um, ex-agencies for a really long time, I think for me the most exciting part about this is actually that um, because Stack Adapt is a multi-channel DSP, as you can see there, we do cover more of those traditional programmatic channels like display, video, native, but also more of those broad broadcast upper funnel channels, you know, like um, connected TV, audio, digital out of home, and of course, in-game. What that means bringing it all together um, is that through that consolidation, um, you know, first of all, it's going to be much quicker and easier for you to adapt to newer channels. But more importantly, I think, and, and this is definitely where it, uh, I get really excited about it, is that you're able to make that activity more efficient. So let's say if you did want to weave in um, in-game as part of your overall multi-channel strategy, you can really start to connect the dots um, and, and drive that efficiency. So you know, you can start to run activity and then retarget on different channels um, to really make sure that you're driving that user further down the funnel uh, towards that action or purchase um, through, through the multiple channels. And with that, of course, it means that, you know, you have one user view of that user. So really to understand how we're driving them from those you know, really big awareness driving activity all the way down to perhaps them clicking on a display ad and, and making a purchase. So you have that one user view, and with that, of course, the one um, kind of consolidated report that's gonna really allow you to understand how that user journey um, converted into a purchase or, or activity um, as you desire. 
So getting into more of the creative examples, and again, I think this is where it starts to really come to life. Um, you know, you'll be able to see on the screen here. Um, you know, these are really impactful. They're obviously taking over the whole screen for that user um, in a variety of ways, um, in a way that is both impactful, but also really native to that environment. So it's not uh, intrusive. There's no pop-ups or anything like that. Um, but yes, at the same time, it, it does really stand out um, within the game to drive that awareness. And yeah, just a couple more examples there. And you can really see the variety of formats and, um, you know, uh, the ways in which we can incorporate your brand so it's everything from um what looks like outdoor ads within the game itself um all the way down to things like you know um clothing for the characters and things like that so definitely a big variety of opportunities to use in game as well yes thank you so much for that with that being said we're already wrapping up the webinar um just to just to sum up all the points discussed about first of all you should know your audience and understand where your brand is the right fit for in-game. No worries, by the way, we got you covered. We can always make sure to help you with that. Beyond that, you should make sure to use in-game advertising as an extension of your multi-channel strategy, as Yasmin just told you about it. It's very important to make sure to drive the, the users across all those various channels to make sure you can always reach them whenever, necess whenever necessary. And finally, make sure to think creatively and use blended display and video formats inside gaming environments because this is a huge channel, the potential is very big, and um, we see we see quite a lot of good use cases here as well. Now, so, uh, yeah. oops, um, just going to say, um, yeah, if anyone wants to um, pop a couple of questions um, in the Q and A box, this is definitely where we can get to, to talk and discuss any questions you might have as well um, regarding the channel. I can see. Um, one already has come through. So as Tuna mentioned, you can use the um, um, chat function there to, to sort of ask any questions. Um, yeah, so question number one that I can see, um, yeah, is what are the key benefits of in-game and how do you make the most of it? So um, I suppose we've covered some of the benefits of it being, you know, 100% viewable, uh, being really impactful whilst non-intrusive. Um, and then I'd say definitely the fact that it is the fastest growing um, sort of form of entertainment and fastest growing channel. Um, again, just means that you're able to, to reach that emerging um, user and start to create and find more ways to, to sort of create those upper funnel tactics. Uh, another question is what is your in-game offering like and what inventory can I access? So um, yeah, as we mentioned, there's a variety of um, uh, different um, devices that you can use um, on uh, on um, on in-game um, and also different types of games so everything from you know um, action games and things like that um, yeah all the way to more of that kind of adventure and, and puzzles and things like that um, so another question I can see can we use retargeting? So yes, based on an impression, we can retarget and then use um, retarget them maybe with a slightly more lower funnel message um, further further down the, the funnel as we go along. Do you offer any services to help create and personalize in-game ads? Yes, absolutely. So one of the best um, services, in my opinion, that we offer at Stack It Act is our creative studio. So these guys can help you with anything from you know, strategizing and coming up with ideas and, and building those assets um, for in-game or any other channel for that matter from scratch. Or we can even support you by, you know, telling you what works and what doesn't uh, and maybe even supporting you to maybe change an ad that you have and make it within the specs um, and best practice um, for in-game. Um, are there any minimum spends to get started on in-game? Uh, so no, the biggest um, kind of part of our business model is we don't have any minimum spends to access any of the channels within Stack It Up. Um, one thing that we do recommend, just to ensure that you're actually cutting through and that you are seeing um, you know, desired results, is that you do uh, invest a minimum of five to 10K, depending on the market um, and the types of games that you want to offer. But that is more um, on a case-by-case -case basis. So definitely want to reach out to your reps about at Stack It Out. 
And how broad is the reach of in-game? So, um, yeah, as, as you've been able to see, I mean, this is really a large opportunity um, with massive reach globally, um, particularly within the EMEA space, as you saw. Um, and yeah, it's, it's definitely an excellent avenue for kind of that incremental reach beyond, you know, let's say your, your video, your TV, things like that, depending on the scale of your existing campaigns. I did just see another question actually pop through from Camille. Uh, what's an estimated ROAS? Um, just uh, in terms of ROAS now, typically, as we said, um, in-game is definitely more of an upper funnel channel. Uh, so more in line with you know, driving reach, driving awareness to then fill up that kind of user pool of people that you might then want to speak to further down as we get them closer to those conversions and, and revenue kind of objectives. So you know, because of that, that's not something that um, we'd be able to estimate um, for that channel specifically in silo. Uh, but uh, I would recommend speaking to your stack app representative as well, just to figure out how does that work within your, your broader strategy um, so that we can help you by understanding a bit more about what's going on um, to understand your ROAS as well. Cool. Thank you for that. So that concludes today's webinar. Thank you everyone for attending today. Of course, um, we hope that you found it both informative and helpful. Any questions you may have, you can always reach out to us anyway. So don't worry about that part at all. And just so you know, we'll be sending out a follow-up email right after, this, uh, right after this webinar with a recording to all the registrants. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, bye-bye.